Well, that can't happen because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. We like to say we have two rules. Rule number one. Rule number one, God is good. Rule number two, if you think that God's not good, go back and read rule number one. Because we know that God is good. Those of you who brought your Bibles this morning, both of you, I want to invite you to turn to 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. Now let me ask you this. Who would like to uh, have a Bible for the class today? One, two, three, four, five. Anybody else? Just five? First Kings what? First Kings chapter one. Verse, uh, first Kings chapter 17, rather, verse one. One for you. One for you. One for you. Who else said one for you? And who is my fifth person? One more. Do you have an extra one? Because James raised his hand too. Okay. Is that, uh, that's, you know what? Let's get you a different version here. Let me get you a little easier version. That's. I'm going to give you this one. James, I'll give you mine, all right? That's right. Okay. Now, do you guys know how to find the books of the Bible? Yeah. If you don't, there's a, right up here at the front, there's what they call a table of contents. And it's got all the books of the Bible. And we're looking for 1 Kings, which you will find on page 191. So what you do is go look for page 191. And your page numbers are, where are they? I don't even see the page numbers. Oh, there they are. Right there in the middle. So go all the way until you find page 191. Now yours is going to be on a different page. Did you find it? You did. Good deal. You got yours? You got yours? I know you have yours. Yours? James, let me help you out here, buddy. Oh, actually, you're in John. Nope. You need, uh, oh, no, no, that's not that one. That one up here. First Kings. 17. So, what we'll do is we'll start back here. And there's your table of contents. Solomon, did you find it, buddy? First Kings. And that's going to be on page 380. Yeah, 383. So go ahead and turn on the Bible until you find 383. You're getting close right there. No, no, it's still 100 pages to go. Not that close. A little more. Give it a big chunk. Give it a bigger chunk. Uh, there you go. All right. There's that one right there. There you go. Now you're close. Now you're close. Who's talking? Who's making fun of my fat? You making fun of my fat boy? <laughs> Another 500. Is this kind of reading the Bible? 
Well, yeah, actually, if, if you if you read, uh, I'll count that as participation. If you answer questions, I'll count that as participation. All right, now, let me ask you this. I know you know the answer to this, and I know you know the answer to this. You probably know the answer to this, and I know you two know the answer to this, and your missing sister knows the answer to this. Yeah, I know where she is. So, those of you who I did not point out, let me ask you this. How many tribes, total tribes, were there in the nation of Israel? Hands down, if I pointed you out before, because I know you know the answer to this. How many? How many? Favorite dress in your hand up? How many? Six? Close? Any, any other guess? Did you have your hand up? I saw a finger go up. Nope, she wasn't that close. Any other answers? Sandy? You already know the answer. I know you know the answer. Anybody else? James, what do you think? Five. Five? Nope. Ask, ask it some more. We've got six. We've got seven. We've got five. It's going to be more. Twelve. Twelve. All right. Twelve yeah. tribes. Yeah. Woohoo! Twelve And I'm going to call that in United. Kingdom. Is, nah, well, yeah. Israel. We'll just say United Israel. Here's the reason why. Because at the end of... What king's reign, anybody can answer this, at the end of what king's reign did God say because of his sin, he's going to split the nation of Israel? Who's, whose uh, reign was that? Oh, uh, oh. You know what? I'll bet you know the answer to this. I'll bet you know the answer to this. Yeah, that's it right there. At the end of King Solomon. See, I knew you knew the answer. At the end of King Solomon's reign, you didn't know you were named after a king, did you? Smartest king ever. But King Solomon had a problem. King Solomon had a problem. He didn't follow God the way he was supposed to. And God said, I'm going to tear away ten tribes. And ten tribes, the ten northern tribes, became known as Israel. That's why I say United Israel. And the two southern tribes became known as Judah. All right, now. The ten northern tribes followed a king by the name of Jeroboam. And I'm not going to expect you guys that you got to remember all these names. And the southern ones followed the king by the name of Rehoboam. They had some funny names, didn't they? Think so? Hey, Jeroboam. Meet Rehoboam. Hey, they must be the Boam brothers. <laughs> Now, Jeroboam, God said that I'm going to take ten tribes. You spoke through a prophet. Anybody can tell me what does a prophet, a prophet? What two things does a prophet do? What two things does a prophet do? A favor? Happen. Happen? Yes, it happens. Yes, he tells what? The past? Future, yes. Prophet can tell the future. And what else does a prophet do? Besides Hadassah. What else? Besides Matthias. You all know this. I know you guys know the answer to this. And I'm pleased that you know the answer to this. Anybody? What else does a prophet do? Hadassah, tell me. Oh, come on. He tells secrets. Don't tell. A prophet, <laughs> listen, listen guys, a prophet tells the future and a prophet tells secret. Now, that power is not the prophet's power. That's God's power. God tells the prophet what's going to happen in the future and the prophet tells. God tells the prophet secrets. Wait, I have a question. Sure. I always wanted to know if a, if a 
the prophet was an angel or was nope. just regular nope. person? Prophets were regular people. Oh. They oh. were regular people like you and me. I know people who have given prophecies. I know people. I know I know someone who he was eleven years old and he was given prophecies. Eleven years old. What does that mean? That means that you guys aren't too young for this. You're not too young to let God work in you. Now, favor, how would you like for somebody to come up to you and tell you the innermost secret of your heart, something you didn't want anybody else to know? That'd be kind of scary, wouldn't it be? Yeah, yeah seriously. Think about that. Somebody comes up to you and they are reading what is in your heart. The innermost secret, something that nobody else knows about, and they come up and they tell you about it. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Because God knows the thoughts of our hearts. God knows everything that we do. God knows everything that we think. He knows it all. And if He needs to do it, He will tell somebody and say, Hey, this is what you're thinking. This is what you're doing. That's what happened to King David. He thought he had gotten away with killing the guy. And God told Nathan the prophet, Hey, this isn't right what you just did. So this prophet comes up to Jeroboam and he says, Jeroboam, and he, I need to talk to you. And he took his, own, uh, took his own coat off and he ripped it into 12 pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, he said, Here, take these 10 pieces. They're going to go to you. These are, the ten, these are the 12 tribes of Israel and the God's going to rip the... Uh, the tribe of Israel away from Solomon's son. There's the thing again. He's going to rip that, uh, those tribes away from Solomon's son, and he's going to give them to you. And that's what he did. God did exactly that. Here's the thing. Jeroboam had a chance. He was made the king. He was made the king over the northern tribes, and he had a chance to be favored by God, just like David was. And he blew it. He blew it. You see, David had a promise from God that his family line would go on and on and on forever, that there would never fail to be a king from his family. Jeroboam had that same chance, but he didn't. He didn't obey God. He saw the people going down to Jerusalem to worship, and he thought, man, if they go down to Jerusalem, they might turn back to King Rehoboam and I'm going to lose him and then I'm going to die. i got to do something about that. And he, he made these golden calves. He said, these are your gods, Israel. False gods. And God was angry. And God said to Jeroboam, I'm going to end your family. I'm going to absolutely end your family. 22 years Jeroboam was king. And his son became king after him. And two years later, somebody came up to his son and killed him. The guy's name was Basha. And he came up and he, he killed Jeroboam. And then when he became king, when Basha became king, he went and he killed all of Jeroboam's family. Everybody. Now Basha had a chance to serve God. And he failed too. And God sent another prophet to Basha. And he said, because you have disobeyed God, I will end your family just like I ended Jeroboam's. Basha served as king for 24 years, and he died, and his son became the king. And two years later, a man named Zimri killed his son. And then he went and he killed all of Basha's family. He ended his family. Now, Zimri wasn't very popular. He was only king for seven days. Yeah. And the people started, they, they didn't want him to be king. And he ended up killing himself. And there was a struggle. And then this man called Omri. And he, now I'm not expecting you guys to know all these names, but he was king for 12 years. And then he died, and his son became king. And here's the name I want you to remember his son's name. His son's name was Ahab. Oh. 
Now, the Bible says that Ahab did more to make God angry than any other king before him. He made God very angry with the things that he did. He disobeyed God. But not only did he do that, he married this woman by the name of Jezebel. And Jezebel was just as wicked as he was, only she was more bold about it. See, Ahab was kind of, he was, let me, let me, do you know somebody in school who's, they're all the time telling, they're saying things that's going to get you in trouble. No. But they're shy about it. They act like they're real good in front of the teachers. But when they're not in front of the teachers, they're bad. You guys, that's not you, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> just, make, just making sure, uh, no, let's not name names. We don't need, we don't need to name names. Then there are other people, though, they don't care who knows that they're bad. They're bad and they don't care. They'll come right up to you and they'll be bad right in your face. That's how Jezebel was. She didn't care who knew she was bad. She was mean. Now, I want a volunteer. I want a volunteer. I want a volunteer and somebody who has a Bible. Somebody who has a Bible. I want a volunteer. Ever you got a Bible? No? You don't have a Bible? You want to volunteer anyway? I'll let you volunteer. Do you want my Bible? Do I want to volunteer? Uh, you know what? I got it right. Because mine's, right mine's open too, if you need it. Oh, do you have it open? Yeah, come yeah. on, bring it. Yeah, that's got a bunch of names in it, though. You know, why don't, why don't I, I'll get you for the next one, okay? Miss Faith will give you her Bible, and then I'll get you for the next one. Because this one's got a lot of names here. It says, now, Elijah, you see, God sent a prophet to Abraham. God sent a prophet by the name of Elijah, and that's another name I want you to know. If I can get the uh, cap off here, Elijah. Elijah was a prophet. God, now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe and Gilead said to Ahab, "As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand." There shall be neither dew nor rain these three years except by my word. In other words, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain. It says these years. I said I think I said three years, but it, these years is what it says. Until I say so, it's not going to rain anymore. Now, if you were like me, I grew up where there was a lot of rain. It rained all the time. Soda? Huh? Soda? Where? Soda? No, New York. Oh, where's your office? I, I, I grew up in New York. And it rained all the time there. And I hated when it rained. I'd get up in the morning and it was raining. And I'd get up in the next morning and it was still raining. I love that. And I, yeah, you, that's because you live in Phoenix. Yeah, I love rain, when, when it rains in Phoenix, that's a great thing. When it rained in New York, because it always rained, and when it wasn't raining, it was cloudy. All the time. Yeah, it did, too. Got a better choice of words, but yeah, yeah. So here's the deal. In Israel, their weather is a lot like here. It's dry. It's hot. They need rain. When it rains, they love it. It's a great thing, because when it rains, your crops grow. They didn't know how to irrigate. They didn't, know, they didn't know how to do that. When it rains, your crops grow. When your crops grow, what does that mean? You get food. You get food. And what happens when you got food? You get to eat. You get to eat. If there are no crops, you don't get to eat. Who's ever, who's ever gone a long time without food? Who's ever gone a long time? What's the longest you've ever gone without food? A week. A week? That's a long time. What's the longest time you've ever gone without food? A meal? Got had to skip a meal. Anybody ever get sent to bed without eating? Anybody ever get sent? Get anybody ever get sent to bed without eating supper? Mm -hmm. I hated that because in the morning your stomach's going. Give me something to eat, and you get real hungry. You got you've gone a long time without food. At the end of that time, you just want to eat anything, right? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I eat 
Eating is a good thing, right? You like to eat, don't you? I like to eat. That's obvious. That's obvious I like to eat. Sometimes, guys, just uh, Sometimes God needs to get our attention. God needed to get Israel's attention because they were sinning. God needed to get Israel's attention because they weren't doing what was right. And they were going to make him extremely angry. And he said, until I say so, it's not going to rain again. But here's the problem. No rain, no crops. No crops, no food. No food, pretty soon people start to die. That's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Let me ask you this though. Do you think do you think Elijah somehow would magically escape this? Yeah, he had to live too, right? Here's the thing, God takes care of us. Let me say that again, because it's some of you guys are going. God takes care of us. He provides for us even when it's impossible. Let me tell you something. God fed a million people in the desert for 40 years. He fed a million people in the desert. Let me let me let me put that in perspective. You know how long ago 40 years ago what 40 years is? 40 years ago she was wearing diapers. She was a newborn. 40 years ago I was a teenager. That's a long time ago. God made water come out of a rock. Well, Get that. Water came out of a rock so a million people could drink in the desert. Yes? He did. He did, and God punished him for it. But nevertheless, God still, even though Moses disobeyed God, God still made water come out of the rock because he knew that the people needed to drink. He was supposed to speak to the rock. Instead, he hit the rock because that's what he'd done last time. But we won't get into that. Good point, though. All right. Favor, I'm going to let you read the. I'm going to let you read the next scripture. I want you to read verses uh, two and three. Verses two and three. All right, you're in chapter 17, which is the big numbers, and then your verses are your little numbers. So read that one and that one. So when you see that four, stop. That's right. Oh, your name was there, wasn't it? Yeah. Jordan's the name of a person, too. But it's the name of the river in the river that flows along the east side of Israel. And yes, Jesus got baptized. Jordan, why don't you why don't you read verses four through six? Four, five, and six. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went, step, went and stayed by the brook of Cherith and goes into the Jordan. Okay, excellent. Uh, oh, you've got one more verse, oh. I'm sorry. Um, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Okay, good. Does anybody know what a raven is? Oh. Besides a football team that plays in Baltimore? <laughs> Somebody just shout it out. A bird. A bird. bird. That's a bird, okay? Okay, y'all got that. What color is a raven? Black. 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 Is a raven a big bird or a little bird? Little, little bird. bird. Wrong, it's a big bird. Big. Kind of bird. Ravens are big birds. They're, They're big old birds. And not 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 big like a like a eagle, eagle. or something like that. But, like Sesame Street? but they're still big. Yeah, yeah. Just big. <laughs> Smack you, boy. And I don't mean to kiss. So, God said, listen to this. God said to these birds, I want you to grab some food and go take it 
to Elijah. And that's exactly what they did. Whoa. They grabbed food and they flew it to Elijah. God provided Elijah. You see, God can do anything. God can do anything. There's nothing that's impossible for God. So he had a brook to drink water out of, and he had birds bringing him food. What's a brook? A brook is a stream. Oh. Like a little, a little stream. It's, the Brooklyn it comes from, exactly. That's, that's where Brooklyn comes from. That's your girlfriend. Oh! <laughs> just, just saying. Just saying. Man, I'm, wow. Okay. Listen. God provided food and water for Elijah. God had birds bring him food. He had birds bring him food. Were they ghosts? No, they were ravens. They were, the ravens brought him food. The stream flowed with water, even in the drought. But listen, God had even more amazing things to do. Who else wants to read here? Who else wants to read? Go ahead, Matthias. I'm going to read. Uh, I'm going to have you read verses seven through nine. It stinks. 
It really stinks. They didn't allow women to work. You know why? I look and I see Harmony holding a book. And Harmony, you can read that book, can't you? Women couldn't read back then because they didn't teach women how to read. They didn't teach women how to read at all. And so if you, when you got old enough, do I need to move you somewhere else? Keep your hands to yourself. If, why don't you, uh, let's get up. Put your tail on your seat. If you were a girl growing up, you got married. Now, uh, Melody, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. And you are twelve. You two would just be about the age where you'd be getting married. What? Get out of here. Seriously. That's about the age because all you were good for was to cook and clean. That's all they taught you to do. And so you would make a great wife for a guy. You'd make a great wife for a guy. And here's the thing, you already knew who it was because your parents made a deal with somebody else that you're going to marry him. Oh, you wouldn't even choose? You don't even choose your own mate. No, you're going to marry bad. who your parents tell you to. And at about 12 years old, you're about ready to get married. Hey, I need you to sit up straight. You're what? Cold? Let's put you back where it's a little bit warmer. You want to turn one of the chairs around? You can come sit up back Let's here. Go back. It's not that cold back here. Go back sit by Miss Faith. It's warmer back there. I'll put you over here because there's no air on this side, okay? We just chilled. So, Tell me how this is here. Is that, is that you, warmer? all your life you've had a husband. Your husband provides for you. And then your husband dies. What is going to happen to you? You are going to be poor, especially if you have children. You depend on people who will give you food. You depend on people who might hire you to do, maybe to clean their house. That's how, that's how widows Handled, that's how they handled things with widows back then. So widows were not rich people. Why am I saying all that? Because God said to Elijah, I want you to go stay with a widow. God, a widow can't provide for me. She's poor. She ain't got nothing. How's a widow going to provide for me? And yet... Elijah already knew better. He knew that all he had to do was obey God. And God was going to make sure that things turned out. You're just, you're just running that over in your mind, right? You're thinking of, ooh, Melody's going to get married. And maybe, maybe I can have her room. And I can have all her stuff. I, I see that. I see that going over in your brain right now. She's after your stuff. She is. Your brothers don't care. Oh. They don't. No, they, they want your room. That's that's all they want. They want your room. It doesn't make sense for God to have a widow take care of a man. Let's get you back here. Can I tell you something? God likes to do things that don't make sense. At least don't make sense to us. Because God wants to show you how well He can care for you. Alright, um, who else wants to read here? Kaya, your hand, you got a Bob? I'm gonna. Uh, Chapter, oh, you have five. Chapter 7, here, I got one right there. 17, go down to verse 10. Read 10, 11, and 12, please. Real loud. All right, listen to what God's going to do. Go ahead, Kaya. So he arose and went to the As loud as you can. So he arose and went to the 
Zarephath. Zarephath. Okay, now listen, listen to what Kaya says. Listen real good to what Kaya is going to read here. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar, and see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for Prepare for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Okay. Whoa. Alright, this was right. The widow was not in a good way either. She didn't have a lot of money. She was out there, she had a little bit of meal left in her in her vessel, in her jar. She had a little bit of oil left in her jar. She was going to gather sticks to make a fire and she was going to take that little bit of meal and she was going to take that little bit of oil and she was going to make little cakes out of it so that she and her son could eat it. And that's all the food they had in the house and there was nobody else to give them food and she was prepared to die. That's what situation she was in. Think about that now. I'm going to Good heavens, you've got, it's like you've got kids already. Think about it though. You, it is your responsibility to take care of him. You are going out, you're going to prepare food for you and him. You're going to eat it, and you have no more food left. You and he are going to die. Now, I come along, I'm a prophet, and I come along and I say, hey, could you uh, give me a drink of water? Sure, I'll give you a drink of water. Uh, while you're at it, would you make me a little bit of food? so that I could eat it? That'd be real easy for you to say no, right? Yeah. No! No! We've only got a little bit of food left, and I'm, I'm gonna take this food, and I'm gonna prepare this food for me and my son, and we're gonna eat it, and we're gonna die. Why do you think that I am going to give you what little food we have left? Because she didn't say that. She protested. She said, she said to Elijah, she said, here, look, this is the situation I'm in. This, we don't have a lot of food here. But you know what? Because you asked me to, I'm going to do it. i got to hurry along here. So, Elijah said, do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake and bring it to me, and afterward make something for you and your son. Because here is what the Lord God of Israel says. Listen up. Here is what the Lord God of Israel says. That jar of flour will not be used up. That jug of oil will not run empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she did. And she went and she did as Elijah said. And she and he and their household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not become empty according to the word that the Lord had spoken. God takes care of his people. That means you, 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 and me. And you. God takes care of his people. God will do whatever is necessary to take care of his people. Who's my math people here? Math people. What's three minus two? One. What's two minus one? one? 
What's 1 minus 1? Zero. No, it's 1. What's 1 minus 1? One? 1. No, it, yes. Okay, you guys are <laughs> catching on. What's 1 minus 1? One? 1. With God, 1 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 1. You take out, and it's still there. I'd love to tell you guys what happened, that stuff like that even happens today, but God will take care of you. No matter what he has to do, if he has to have birds bring you food, God is going to do it. He's going to take care of you. If that means that you take food out of your jar, and when you get done, there's as much food left as when you started, even though you took enough to eat, God is going to provide. God will take care of you if you obey Him. If you obey God, He will always take care of you. I want you to remember that. Never forget that. There may be times that you think, it's going to get bad. Parents, cover your ears. I'm going to die! No. God will take care of you. What's the worst thing that can happen? You die. What's, what happens then? You go to heaven. God will take care of you. I'm sorry. I, I hope I didn't scare you. God will take care of you. God loves you so much. He will always take care of you. No matter what happens. If you get in a situation that you are scared, God will take care of you. God loves you that much. And I want you to remember that. You obey God. And God will do wonderful things for you. Things that you could never imagine. He'll move heaven and earth to take care of you. Because He loves you. Bow your heads. Bow your heads this morning. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you. Because you do take care of us. In everything that you do, you take care of us. You never fail. You never fail. Father, may we always obey you. May we always walk in your ways. And may we see the wonderful things that you will do on our behalf. Because you love us. And we thank you now for this day as we go to our homes. I pray that you would go with us and that you would be with us at all times. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.